Hey there, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of 3B TV. I'm Brian. This is 3B Farm and Homestead here in beautiful upstate New York. And on this episode of 3B TV, I want to share with you the grow light system that I am putting together here um, <clears throat> to get our transplant started here in 2018. Now, so this is actually the first year that I'm going to be trying to start my vegetables from seed. I've not tried doing any transplants before. I've always bought my transplants at a local nursery. And so this year I've been doing a lot of research and uh, have put together this system. It's kind of a hodgepodge of uh, a variety of different ideas that I've kind of gleaned off of different YouTube videos and so hopefully this is going to work out well for me and I'm hoping that by doing this those of you who have done transplants or started things from seed before um, will help correct my mistakes help me correct my mistakes before I get too far into it um, but to kind of let you know where I'm at at this point what I've done is I've gone ahead and set up this um, rack system here in our office um, I was going to do this downstairs in the uh, basement but our basement is not heated and so I was concerned about being able to um, regulate the temperature uh, of my um, plants and so I opted to put it up here the way our house is heated our house is actually heated by a t uh, pellet stove in the front room and this is towards the back of our house so it does stay a little cooler back here um, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to regulate the heat by just opening and closing the door and keeping things nice and comfortable but not too hot and not too cold kind of like Goldilocks just right so um, we bought this uh, I bought this um, it's nothing special it's just a, a wire rack I got it through Target and um, put it together the other day and uh, the other thing I've done here is I got some heavy-duty um, painters plastic and I put it at the back so this is painters plastic here it actually starts at the top and uh, then I run it all the way down and it comes out onto the floor there a little bit and the reason why I did that is because this is a carpeted floor and so if there are any mishaps uh, a tray that gets flipped over um, hopefully I'll at least contain some of it although I know that that stuff is going to splatter everywhere but at least hopefully I'll be able to contain some of it if you know some water gets spilled it'll it'll get captured on the plastic as well and the other thing is that um, you know maybe I can kind of create a little bit of a greenhouse effect by pulling some of this plastic around the side and then I have a little bit left over so I could uh, put it at the top and drape it down over the front if I need to um, the last part of the system I wanted to share with you are these lights so one of the things I did when I was I was doing a lot of research into this and I was researching what kind of lights I should get whether I should buy quote-unquote grow lights um, or what I should do and the vast majority of the conventional wisdom that I saw was not to buy grow lights but was to buy fluorescent light bulbs um, even though LEDs would be better but LEDs cost more money and so people were recommending to do the fluorescent light thing um, and so that's what I was going to do then I saw a video from Al Lumna at Lumna Acres which I will link to right here where he put together a, a video on some grow lights that he bought some LED lights that he bought on Amazon and they were fairly cheap so I had considered that but then in the long run I just figured you know what this year I'm gonna keep it simple I'm gonna go ahead I'll buy the fluorescent lights and uh, and we'll go that route and I was all ready to do that went to Walmart um, not to buy the light fixtures because what I had read is that the fluorescent light fixtures at Walmart are not good quality surprise surprise I know um, and so I was gonna buy the light fixtures themselves from Lowe's but my plan was to look at light bulbs and see how much those cost at, um, at Walmart. So while I was at Walmart, I actually found these. It is a hyper tough four foot LED shop light, 3200 lumens. And according to my research, I had found 
that you wanted your lights to be somewhere between 5,000 and 6,500 Kelvin. And where is it here? Specification, 5,000 Kelvin. So right there on the low end of the spectrum, but definitely within the... Um, within the realm of possibilities. And these things were like 20 bucks a piece. So no bulbs to buy. And uh, so that's what I went ahead and did is I picked up these LED lights and I'm going to try using those. So if I am making a bad decision here, please let me know in the comments below. Um, otherwise, this may be an experiment for the internet. I have not seen too many people attempting to use these. Actually, I haven't found anybody on YouTube attempting to use these as grow lights. I found a couple of people that were using them as shop lights, seemed happy with them in that regard, but nobody attempting to use these as grow lights. So I may be the first, who knows, but that's what I'm attempting to do. They were like 20 bucks a piece, and uh, so excited to give it a try. Um, we will see what happens. Um, so those are my grow lights, I've got two of those, and uh, I'll probably get another couple for down here, and we probably will have two of these um, that probably should be enough for us this year between the two rows, but uh, we will see. The last thing I wanted to share with you is this. Um, I went ahead and uh, I bought a soil block maker. So that's going to be another part of the experiment this year is making soil blocks uh, to start my seedlings in and we'll see how that works for us. So lots and lots and lots of experiments going on here at 3B Farm and Homestead probably biting off a lot more than I should I can chew and I probably should keep it simple and do my transplants in the little pot things but hey that's not how I roll you should know that by now go big or go home is how I roll so uh, looking forward to uh, trying this out and uh, seeing if we can get some uh, transplants started and some successes uh, as far as starting some vegetable plants here on 3B Farm and Homestead. The last thing that I'm going to do here, and uh, I don't have it in here yet, but uh, I saw recommended that you put a fan on your um, transplant so that they're not weak, uh, so they get a little wind buffeting them, and so I'm gonna do that as well. And if you know when is the time you should start blowing uh, air on your transplants, let me know in the comments below. I'd really appreciate that. Um, I don't want to start it too soon, don't want to wait too long, um, but I want to make sure that I get it just right, kind of the Goldilocks here. So until next time, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in to 3B TV. If you've got any comments or questions or feedback, things I'm doing wrong, things I might want to consider, let me know in the comments below. I'd really, really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please like, share, subscribe, click that little bell. Make sure that you don't miss an entertaining, informative uh, episode of 3B TV. So until next time, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, and we will catch you later.